The Archbishop also challenged a group of British leaders asking if they would ever carry signs that say, we are all Christians. Now, one woman has personally witnessed the persecution of Christians. Zina Caracos, a Chaldean Catholic born in Baghdad, she's now living in Troy, Michigan, and is the president of the Iraqi Christian Foundation, an organization that provides aid and advocates for Iraqi and Syrian Christians. She joins us now. Zina, describe for us what it is currently like being a Christian in Iraq today. Since 2003, since the Iraq war began in 2003, Christians in Iraq have faced a very brutal genocide. That's what it, it absolutely has been a genocide. And then since 2014, then uh, we've also had ISIS that added on to the genocide of Christians in Iraq. So life in, for Christians in Iraq right now uh, means discrimination based on faith. It means a lack of opportunities in terms of jobs. Christians are very discriminated against when it comes to jobs. Uh, in the northern part of Iraq, um, ISIS, when they came through in 2014, they destroyed many Christian uh, towns, homes, churches. So it's, it's a matter of just survival on a day-to-day -day basis for Christians right now in Iraq. So, Zina, a lot of people would think that the U.S. ousting Saddam Hussein from Iraq was a good thing for Iraqi Christians. But do you think that's true? No, I do not think that's true. Uh, definitely the situation for Christians before 2003 was much, much better than what it is after. Um, Saddam Hussein was a uh, brutal dictator, yes, but he um, he was more focused on his political opponent. So if someone was not a political opponent, he pretty much left that community alone. Christians uh, are, Iraqi Christians are a very peaceful, predominantly non-political community. Uh, Saddam Hussein knew that. He, he left the community alone, treated them equally as with other Iraqi citizens. And Christians had the same opportunities to education and jobs as other Iraqis prior to 2003. And that just has not been the case. Zina, a, pers a personal question for you. You left Iraq when you were two years old and you've been back several times. But would you ever go back to live there? It's, it's difficult for me because I grew up in the United States uh, for me to ever go back and live in Iraq. I mean, I think it's, it's already tough for the Christians who are there to live there on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I, I consider myself a Chaldean American. Um, my ethnicity is Chaldean. But I definitely have an attachment to the ancient churches that are in Iraq, the, 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 the heritage, my heritage, my community's heritage is still there. But for myself, it would be quite difficult. And, 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 and sadly, uh, as I mentioned, for Christians there, it's quite difficult. So what is your hope for the future there? We've been uh, Christians for 2,000 years. Uh, we are one of the early Christians. And so the, the hope is that we, we can continue, that the culture can continue in Iraq. Um, but it's going to continue to need a lot of help from the diaspora, as well as uh, Western aid organizations and, such, and the Catholic Church, which has been tremendously helpful to the Catholic and other Christian uh, Christians in Iraq. My last question for you very quickly, how can people at home, do you think, best help these persecuted Christians so far from them? Um, I think raising awareness um, is very helpful. Praying, please keep Iraqi and Syrian Christians in your prayers. Um, if you can, you know, if, if the audience can support the Christians in any way, uh, please go to, you know, the website at IraqiChristianFoundation.org. Um, and see, you can find more information there about how to help. Um, but I, I definitely think there's things we can do, such as praying and donating when, when we can um, to the cause. All right, Zina, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Thank you for having me.